Ah, a pile of dead broom. Lovely. While walking on a velvety, mossy carpet. This is nice. This is the nicest part of the Port Alberni subdivision, I think. A railway hike along the Beaufort Slope near Port Alberni. This is on the Esquimalt and Nanaimo Railways, Port Alberni subdivision. Here is a railway map of the Port Alberni area to give you context. My hike is in the upper part of the map. Zooming in to the upper part of the map, here's a closer look at the area of my hike marked in red. It's an out and back hike and I start at Smith Road and my turnaround point is milepost 28 which is on the slope um, above the Cherry Creek neighborhood. So that's 5.3 miles each way. The return trip in kilometers is about 17 kilometers of railway walking for me. This is what it looks like at mile 28.9 bridge, which is close to my turnaround point. I've already gone turn around and come back to this on my hike, and this is where I've decided to take my break and record my introduction for today's hike. This area of the railway last saw a regular freight train in early 2002. Apart from this, the recent activity is a speeder tour in June 2016. And other than that, this corridor is well used by recreation users, ATVers, uh, hikers, uh, motor bikers, and um, that's probably about it. I'm starting in the dark because I want to get um, to some nice areas um, by the time uh, the sunrise happens. And I just like morning light. And so I'd rather start up in the dark and have things brighten up and then enjoy the dawn. And because it's Port Alberni, there's a lot of fog in the morning. The purpose of the trip for me is I really enjoy railway walking. I have, uh, I call it an affection for this Port Alberni subdivision of the ENN. I really enjoy it. Um, I like some of the old structures on it, and I like a lot of the old history on it. I also feel that um, by coming here and doing this walk, I can report back on the condition of the line to anyone who's interested. And so this is in some ways an annual checkup walk done by me. And if other people find this useful, that is great. From mile 33.3 to mile 32 is a um, couple long straight stretches as the railway goes northwest out of Port Alberni and then curves to the north. This is because it's taking a long way out in order to build up some elevation to then run up the Beaufort slope. It's 7.15 and I'm at Smith Road level crossing outside of Port Alberni. ENN Railways, Port Alberni subdivision, mile 33.3. Sunrise is at 8.06. Civil twilight starts at 7.33. So I've got about 20 minutes or so of the dark gradually lighting up. And then we're into civil twilight and I'll be able to see okay. That's where I'm walking. No weeds. What a nice grade. The start of a beautiful day. It's a lot of Alberni fog here around mile 33.
And that's what we look like. Looking beside me, that mountain slope is what I'm walking to. The railway is going to curve around and then I'll follow nice autumn leaves. I was last on this hike a year and a day ago, October 30th, 2019, and I heard dogs at this same spot. The dogs heard me and started barking. Uh, some things don't change. The first curve of the day, and after this curve, I will be walking geographic northward. This is really beautiful. Gorgeous. What a gorgeous morning. Now I'm on the second long straightaway between miles 33 and 32. I'm going geographic north. Although railway timetable direction is eastward because I'm heading on the railway towards Parksville. The railway continues going straight towards the mountain. That's where I'm going. Between mile 32 and 31, the railway goes through a very tight curve and that sets it up for running up the Beaufort slope back. And so that curves from going in a northerly direction to going southeast. Right in the middle of the curve is a lovely area just covered with maple trees and um, this is where the Alberni Pacific Railway used to cross underneath the ENN. At first glance it looks like a cemetery through there with a bunch of white markers but those are all for trees that have been planted. And coming up to mile 32 which was also the location for the Bainbridge Lumber Company spurs that went off the railway here. This is around mile 31.7 and this is where the Bainbridge siding was which also had the interchange track to Alberni Pacific Lumber Railway. Right around here, working its way down to the end of the straightaway. As I'm walking down where the Bainbridge siding used to be, I'm thinking of what I honor when I walk here. Well, I'm thinking of the late Soup Campbell. Soup passed away uh, summer of 2020. So as I'm walking today on the Beaufort Slope, an area where Soup would have done various um, track repairs and other things, I'm just thinking of Soup today. Looking back from where I came and turning, the big curve. There's still some leaves in the trees. I'm really thankful for that. I'm almost at mile 31.5. In the middle of the curve is the spot where there was originally a 63 span timber frame trestle. It's 946 feet long. That's really long. And it was where it crossed over the railway of the Alberni Pacific Lumber Company. And then in 1962 the trestle was reduced by filling in uh, dirt on either end and it was left as a 64 foot uh, trestle, just a pile trestle, and it went over the road because by then the Alberni Pacific Lumber Company um, changed it from a railway to a road. And now, sometime between 1962 and maybe 10 years ago or so, that trestle was removed and completely filled in and I'm going to be finding the spot where you can see where the road would have gone underneath on either side and of course before 1962 that was the Alberni Pacific Railway going underneath. 
This is one of the most lovely spots on this walk. Gorgeous. Just coming up where the tree is over top of the railway is uh, where the path goes down to where the Alberni Pacific logging road and railway were on this side. There's a culvert underneath me with a creek going through. Originally that would have been part of the really long trestle. So here's the ENN continuing and curving to the right. And to the left and to the right on either side go down um, pathways. So let's walk down the path on the north side. I'm almost at grade level down here. There's an ATV here coming by, but I'm looking at a spot where it could have been where the Alberni Pacific crossed underneath through there, perhaps. Looking back towards the ENN grade, again, it's just a built up grade, which used to be a, a really long trestle. And back up here to the ATV road and log train trail to go back up to the ENN. Okay, let's go down the south side path. This is really pretty. Up there is the railway grade of the ENN. Just following the log train trail. My guess is that it would have been right through here, it would have been where Alberni Pacific crossed under. The reason I'm thinking that is it lines up with the straight road here. So I'll just back up a bit and turn so you can see what I mean. So instead of the road currently branching off to the left, it would have just gone straight and under the railway. Um, as this leftover grade on the side indicates. Ah, I think this is it. While I'm waiting for my camera to complete a photograph, I'll just play with my other camera. Zoom in. Well, I like it when I figure some things out somewhat conclusively. You go, okay. So it would have been down here, just the grade continued. Underneath. This was gradually developed as the pass around for ATVers and hikers. There's the ENN right up there. And my guesswork from down below still makes sense from up top now because I'm just about the spot where the railway would have crossed under. Right beside me, some rail rail down there, likely used as rebar when they were filling in. That's my guess. Again, straight through there is the south side. Actually, a bit further down here. So down through there, crossing under where I am and through. And down through there is the road, which used to be Alberni Pacific Lumber Railway. Or Alberni Pacific Logging. I will continue in this curve for a while. And once it straightens out, I'm basically going southeastward. Gradually up the Beaufort Slope. 
The next landmark of note for me is the mile 31 post. Between mile 31 and 30, um, there used to be uh, an old trestle that's been filled in. There was a water tank and that I look for, and spoiler alert, I couldn't find any evidence of it, but I did find the nice creek that used to um, be the water source. Mile 31. I was hoping the sign would still be up. It is barely. And when I look for when I look for a can of Lucky, I know I'm in Port Alberni. Um, when I'm looking for the old site of a water tower, it's usually um, near a creek. So, the sound of a creek is my clue. And I can hear a creek. I haven't found my evidence of a water tower yet. But I'm coming up to the fabulous creek. I'm at a spot where a trail comes up and goes alongside. So it's actually easier to walk alongside the trail here so I can make some better time and be safer. Okay, so I did not find any evidence of the old water tower at mile, uh, what, 30.8? I'll continue. Geographic southeast towards the morning sun, but railway timetable east. Morning. ATVers seem to be some of the friendliest people I encounter while doing railway walks. Well, actually, all the people I encounter are friendly. And there's hardly any people I encounter. <laughs> but the point is, I always get a friendly wave from the ATVers. I'm in another filled in trestle, which is obvious. Got the sound of water. Big drop off there. Big drop off on the other side. This is mile 30.1. So this was a 32 span timber frame trestle. It was 481 feet long and it was filled in in 1918. So seven years after the completion of the railway in 1911. So one of the short lived original timber trestles. Again, the big drop off on the side. And now it's really just the west end of this timber cut. And around the corner is the mile 30 post and then the mile 29.9 trestle. Here we go, mile 30. 10 mile an hour slow order. I have no problems complying with that. I'm an old guy. There's the resume speed sign for the other way. Between mile 30 and 29, uh, what do we have? We've got the fabulous uh, mile 29.9 wood trestle, which I really enjoy. This will be my third time seeing this trestle. Um, and then there was a filled in trestle um, that was filled in in the 1970s. Also between mile 30 and 29 is a really interesting structure called a track culvert. And I will show you a photo of that here. The sign means that if you've got something like a plow blade or something, you're going to meet an obstruction in a few moments, so you better lift at that. And in this case, the obstruction is the inner guardrail of this trestle. Otherwise known as a Jordan rail. 
it confused me for the longest time too. And it's simply a guard rail so that if there's a derailment while there's train cars on the bridge, the train car wheels get caught between the inner rail and outer rail and the car doesn't crash off the structure. The mile 29.9 trestle. I am happy to be here once again. This is my third time visiting here. So this trestle was um, rebuilt in 1924. It would have originally been built for 1911 for the opening of the line. Rebuilt in 1924 and again in 1953. And I'm uncertain if there's any other rebuilding work done in the 1980s. Um, but this is one of the six trestles that was not visited um, in the recent um, corridor assessment engineering report. I think that report was done August 2019. But I'm visiting it for the third time, and so I can report on at least its cosmetic condition. Got stringers below me in the middle, and there's stringers on the side as well. But I'll stay in the middle because I got stringers below me, so that's a little bit less risky. But here's the condition of the ties. I'm working on a photo composition that kind of goes like that where I can see the waterfall between the ties and then the waterfall of course in the background. It's time to walk down the trestle. Oh yeah, gets a little bit special around here. Here's a refuge bay barrel holder that I don't go out on because in the middle there is no tie that goes out all the way to support it. I'm not going there. And I might as well stay on the side. I got stringers below me. Oh, some sort of energy drinky thing. Well, I'm thankful I can see my footing this year. The leaves are not as plentiful on the ground yet. Okay, continue walking eastward at around mile 29.9. I haven't been at this spot here oh, for a year and a half, but bears have been here recently.
I got my bear spray. I make noise. This is really nice walking here. It's uh, easy to see. It's not a lot of overgrowth on the side. The grade isn't too bad for walking. This is nice. Here's another ATV trail that comes up and crosses the tracks with a lucky can as a marker. How cute. There it is going down. This is around mile 29.8, 29.7, something like that. Yeah. I'm in the Alberni Valley. I think this is the rock cut I was mentioning earlier. I had seen a photograph of one of the Dayliner excursion trips in the 1970s where someone was up there looking down. It's probably a, a David Wilkie photo, totally his style. Anyway, here I am in the rock cut looking east. I promise you I didn't bring these lucky cans as props. They actually just are here. Lucky logger. Someday I need to try one of those just to see. It might change me. This is awesome. This is the rock slide. I will put a photo up of what this looked like in June 2019. But now it's been cleared. I am thankful to whoever cleared this. Wow. You guys did a fabulous job. Wow. There's no creative photographs for me of a rock slide. This is great. Here's the track culvert. There's three ties in the middle that are supported by a concrete that goes down to the ground. It's just open. I'll walk across. Give you a better look. That is what it looks like. And it just goes on down. Okay, I'm done playing with the track culvert for now. See it again on, on my way back. Okay, onward. Here's a spare rail in the woods beside me. Look at how nice this is in terms of vegetation. No rockfall, no windfall. This has been what it's been like for a lot. And part of it might just be a blessing of geography. 
for weeds, but I'm kind of thinking that the hikers and ATVers up here on the western slope of the Beauforts really take care of things. Here we are, mile 29. Between mile 29 and 28 is this here bridge that I'm sitting on right now as I'm recording. And then there's also going to be three different uh, trestles that were filled in, likely in the late 1970s. The sign says obstruction ahead. And that is the guardrail for the mile 28.9 bridge. Coming up to that right now. Mile 28.9. It is a bridge, not a trestle. It's um, basically stringers uh, resting on abutments on either side. And then there's piers in the middle. There's four piers that um, support in the middle, but they're not trestle supports. And um, the stringers were replaced, uh, I think in 1962. It's the last time this was touched. This was not visited uh, in the recent Island Corridor Assessment um, report by the engineers. One of the six structures that wasn't, but is one of the structures that I've been to a few times. This is my second time here, looking eastward. Okay, let's walk it. The deck looks in pretty good condition. Stringer is right below me. Lots of autumn leaves. Here's some concrete piers. There's a concrete pier right there. Another one. And then the concrete abutment at the far end with the fire barrel. Here's a concrete pier right there. And another one with moss on it, and the abutment at the end. This is one of the simpler structures on the e n Port Alberni subdivision. The fact that there's not a timber frame trestle um, makes it eh, a little bit less interesting for me. But, it's a beautiful scene. Fire barrel. Okay, I'm walking east at mile 28.9. I'm heading to mile 28. That post is my turnaround point. Between now and then, um, it's really just a, from my point of view, a caretaker mile. Meaning, this mile between 28 and 29, it's really hard for me to get to, and it's at the end of a really long walk from either end, no matter how I access it. And so, um, if I don't go this extra mile to see it, I likely won't. And I'm curious, always curious about what this, the condition of the line is in terms of rock slides and vegetation etc. And so I want to make the effort to just go one more mile, which is really two because I'm doing an out and back hike, to get to milepost 28. And I got to milepost 28 from the other end uh, back in April. But between now and then there's the site called Bowstock. And I don't know what Bowstock was. It's not a siding, or at least in the chart it doesn't say it was a siding. So I'm assuming it was a station name. And whether that was an actual station or really just a timetable location. I'm thinking it was a timetable location. Last night I did my homework and I watched a video I had made from my June 2019 hike here. And closer to mile 28, it was really overgrown with vegetation. Like a lot of bad broom and a lot of leafy trees encroaching in the middle of the track and 
on both sides with the leaves coming in and it was really difficult to walk through and see anything. I'm curious if it's been cleaned up by those fabulous hiking and ATV people or if it's just still the same or gotten a bit worse. I will find out. This is beautiful. It's a pile of dead broom. Someone's been broom busting in here. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Ah, a pile of dead broom. Lovely. While walking on a velvety mossy carpet. This is nice. This is the nicest part of the Port Alberni subdivision, I think. Well, one of the nicer parts. More busted broom. Just take a look at this. Look how clear this is. Tell me, is this the Port Alberni subdivision of the ENN? Wow. This is amazing. Between mile 29 and 28. This is community hikers and uh, ATVers. Wow. This is likely one of the original trestle sites. It's filled in. Culvert now carries the creek. This is pretty. Speaking of pretty, up ahead. Wow. I'm enjoying the maple leaves today. Okay, I think this is the tree tunnel coming up. So, for this time of year, this could be very amazing to walk through with the leaves. Okay, time to enjoy this maple tree tunnel. As I walk towards mile 28. Here's another former trestle site. The water falling down. Again, on my chart that goes to at least the late 70s, um, these trestles were still listed. So they were filled in sometime after that. A little short, guys. Here's one of those overgrown areas that I remember from when I was here 17 months ago. Yeah, it's not too bad now. It was worse then in early June. There's still a grease box. Here we are. A very long straight stretch here. Railway west of mile 28. I love this sound. This is the waterfall at mile 28. This is my turnaround point. That's a good thing. Oh, 
Okay, 5.3 miles done, and I'll turn around and I'll do them again. And head Railway West. So the ties here are covered by some pretty fertile soil, and I've kicked a, a line here with my boot, and I can't see the tie at all along that whole stretch. It's just black, fertile soil, which is why there's so much stuff growing around here. can't feel the ties at all as I walk. So I think I got my answer about Bowstock. I'm around mile 28.1 here, and there's no room for a siding on either side. So it was a station name. I'm coming back towards the mile 28.9 bridge. And I'm going to stop and sit on it for a while and take my a little bit more than midway break. Okay, my break is over. And continue my walk from here at mile 28.9. A mile 29 sign is nicely hidden. Here's some rail stored in the woods. At about mile 29.01. Track culvert. Three prongs in the middle holding up. It's the simple idea. Okay, I continue railway west. And here's the rock slide that was cleared sometime in the last 17 months. I'm really thankful for this. It wasn't just kind of, it wasn't easy to do because there was a really large rock here and they would have had to have broken it apart. So lots of work by people who know what they're doing. Thank you very much. So the rocks, the debris right up to the rail, the rail wasn't broken. Hey, Port Alberni Christmas tree. Looks pretty nice. Ah, that's a beauty. Here's some nice mushrooms. Nice to look at, that's what I mean. Here comes the mile 29.9 trestle.
spot on this trestle is just one of my favorite spots on the entire ENN system. It's all about the creek, waterfall coming down. It's oh, the sound, the sights, the history, it's great. And with fall colors, even better. Until next time, probably a year from now. Here's mile 30 and the resume speed sign, but I'm too tired to resume any kind of speed. I just want to keep moving. Okay, I'll see how I do as far as timing goes for this next mile. So, we'll see if I'm up to my 30 minute walking standard, or if I'm into slow tired. This isn't bad, but it's interesting just for how rare it's been today for tall broom plant, but it's just by itself. And I'm in the middle of the rails, which are really hard to see. So overgrown, so it's very moist, lots of growth and a big windfall across. So, this is as bad as it gets. That's okay. This western slope of the Beauforts is nice for the railway. Twenty-eight minutes ago I left mile 30 and now I'm at mile 31. Hey, that's pretty good time. Here's another area where the growing conditions are good for plants along the railway. And so there's plants in the middle, plants on the side, but not too horrible to walk through. Again, this is a really good section overall. Looking back where I came from, end of the straightaway, because looking ahead, I'm entering the big curve. Okay, this part's growing in quite a bit from the sides, but this isn't going to last very long. Okay, around this curve should be mile post 32. I'm in my last curve of my hike. It's curving, then it'll break out to a straightaway and just head on right down to Smith Road. That's fresh, really fresh. This is a pretty rock cut. I enjoyed it last time I was here a year ago. I still like it. It's nice. And it straightens out. Nice. I was here in the dark this morning, so it's nice to see it in the light now. Looking back, I'm almost at mile 33, so I'm in the area of a couple old original trestles that were filled in in the first 10 years of the railway. And it makes sense because I'm in a swampy area, 
and uh, it's the grade that I'm on is built up so that means it would have been filled in this is the post for a mile 33 I'm almost done I'm rather tired but it's a good tired I had a great day saw lots of things that um, are meaningful to me I was really happy that the autumn leaves were there are a lot of them still up in the trees plus a nice carpet of leaves for me to walk through uh, the trestles were interesting I was also really happy to discover the good condition of the line and that the rock slide had been cleaned up and it's always good and fun to get outside and do photography and hike so that part's good the exercise is good i hope you enjoyed watching this